So we'll be discussing about Hodgkin lymphoma current management. We can identify a few important personalities in the photographs of very characteristic picture of the Hodgkin lymphoma as given in the literature and the also famous Greek sternum cells. This is a brief overview of the class today. We will be discussing uh, under the following heads, history, clinical feature, diagnosis, staging, treatment, some special situation followed in the end by a small quiz. So let's begin. So the history of uh, Hodgkin lymphoma dates back to almost 17th century when first paper uh, on this was described. Then uh, modern science begins with Sir Thomas Hodgkin's paper in 1832. There have been multiple, uh, you know, enhancements or uh, uh, what should I say, uh, advisories during the course of history. Like first combination chemotherapy was given in 1960s. In the 1964-65, also important four types of classical Hodgkin lymphoma were described as by Luke's and Butler in the rice classification. Then the gold standard ABVD, which remains the gold standard even today, was given in a randomized trial from that time versus mop chemotherapy in 1973. In 1994, the real classification came, which introduced us to NLPHL, the other type of Hodgkin lymphoma seen in 5% of the cases. An came in 1971. Monoclonal antibodies were introduced into the Hodgkin lymphoma management in around 2003. And somewhere around 2015-16, we had introduction of checkpoint inhibitors. Lastly, around 2019, we had introduction of CAR-Ts and new monoclonal uh, antibody, CAPI. So, classification-wise, if we see two types, NLPHL and classic Hodgkin lymphoma, NLPHL accounts for around 5% of the cases and the classical for 95%. Four subtypes as mentioned in 2016 and luckily no changes in 2022. The subtypes of Hodgkin lymphoma are diagnosed on the basis of their histomorphology. Uh, morphologically, we can see in the nodular sclerosis type, there are Hodgkin cells, a lot of fibrosis and inflammatory milieu. In the miscellurate, it's mostly inflammatory milieu and few Hodgkin cells, no fibrosis. Lymphocyte depleted, no lymphocytes, more of amount of lymphocytes. And in the NLPHL, the classical Hodgkin cells are not there. What we have is LP cells and inflammatory milieu. It comprises for around 11% of lymphomas in the Western world uh, with the age standardized ratio of around 1. Both genders are almost equally affected, although we see more of uh, male patients in our scenarios. If we see across the world, we can see that there are some regional variation in the incidence with higher incidence seen in the developed countries. And far lower incidence seen in African countries and Southeast Asian countries and least incidence seen is East, uh, sorry, Western Pacific regions and Southeast Asia. However, the mortality is higher in these developing countries and least in the developed countries. Then there are uh, age-related incidence variations like we have a peak in the adolescent and a young adult uh, group and a late peak in the elderly population. So it's one of the commonest type of cancer in the adolescent with a bimodal peak. And in US males, you can see a trimodal peak as well. It's a peak seen in the adult population as well. Why this occurs? Because uh, NSA, uh, the nodular sclerosis type is more commonly seen in the younger population and mixed cellularity and nodular sclerosis are more commonly seen equally in the elder population. In the developed countries, it mostly presents as cervical or supraclavicular lymphadenopathy. Other nodes are less commonly involved. Nodal sclerosis is the predominant subtype. In the developing countries, more commonly it's the mixularity type of pattern. There is no bimodal peak and uh, the incidence kind of uh, peaks in the ad uh, adolescent group and uh, stays uh, uniformly throughout after that. More commonly patients present with advanced stages. In immunocompromised patients like uh, those with HIV AIDS or post uh, as a part of PTLD, the patient present more commonly with external disease with B symptoms, advanced stage and bone marrow involvement. Elderly population again present with subdiaphragmatic disease, mixillary subtype and B symptoms. Pruritus, although not a B symptom, but is seen in around 30% of the cases. And alcohol-induced pain, which is seen in around 17% of the cases, is again one of the very commonly associated uh, symptoms with Hodgkin lymphoma. 
let's go into the pathology and diagnosis of the disease. So, if we see into the cellular origin, Hodgkin lymphoma cell, that is the reach Sternberg cell, they do not resemble any normal hematopoietic cell type. So, there are some uh, antigen or genes which are from B cell, some from T cell, NK, myeloid and dendritic cells. But there is clonally, we see there is immunoglobin heavy and light chain rearrangement. So, they derive from pre-apoptotic germinal cell B cells. This is important to remember that these are B cell in origin. How are they formed? They are formed uh, by abscission failure in the presence of functional order of B kinase. That is, somewhere around here, we see that incomplete cytokinase refusion occurs, which leads to formation of reach Sternberg cells. This is a very important slide. Uh, the Hodgkin cell, they comprise only around 1 to 2 percent of the tumor burden uh, in the whole histopathology specimen. All the other cells are mostly the surrounding cells or the uh, you know inflammatory milieu in which they are present. These are in the form of eosinophils, fibrosis, fibroblasts, dendritic cells, TH cells, cytotropic steel lymphocyte, and so on and so forth. And there is a lot of interaction which occurs between the Hodgkin cells and all these cells which lead to proliferative advantage for the Hodgkin cells and a variable effect on the protection of Hodgkin cells leading to uh, different effects on the immuno, uh, immunity of the host, leading to a kind of an immunosuppressive state in the host. If we see the signaling pathway, this is the predominant pathway mediated by CD30, CD40 and rank ligand as well as EBV infection, which occurs in almost 40% of the cases. We see that this is the most common pathway which is involved, involving NEMO, IKK and uh, nf kappa B. If we see the genes which are commonly involved or mutations which commonly occur, these occur in the form of TNF, uh, LAIP3, nf kappa B, 1A and 1E mutations and more importantly, REL amplifications. These are seen in almost like 90% of the cases. Other less common mutations are NIC gain, CYLD mutation and TRAP mutations. This is important to remember that this is commonly associated with chromosome 9 p abnormalities and have effect, uh, therapeutic effect as checkpoint inhibitors are active in these mutations. So, we have some uh, mutational profile leading to uh, prognostic effects. So, favorable outcome is seen if the genes expressed are B cluster regions like these and unfavorable outcome if the extracellular matter cluster gene pre predominate. Certain IHC markers like CD38 on uh, macrophages, it has been issued with poorer survival and higher risk of relapse, so on. And uh, we see in the previous slide that IA10 has a more important uh, role in the inflammatory milieu of the cell. And so high IA10 levels are so associated with advanced stage and worse outcomes. If we go into a diagnosis, one thing to remember that diagnosis is based on biopsy of the enrolled node and immunohistochemistry. This is a typical phenotype of a classical Hodgkin cell, CD15 positive in most of the cases, CD13 around 70% of the cases, Pax5 is weak, negative for BNT markers and Iberish is usually recommended and positive. For the NLPHL, we see these are characteristically B cell markers, CD20, 45, 79A, which are positive, then BCL6 and PAX5 are positive. 15 and 30 are negative in most of the cases of NLPHL. Workup as recommended by NCCN includes routine CBC, biochemistry, pregnancy test in the childbearing females, PET scan or a CT scan for staging and fertility counseling. For selected cases, you may go for fertility preservation. Pulmonary function test, especially if you are planning AV video or therapy, viral markers are recommended. Advent of PET scan and uh, good markers on PET scan, which can uh, delineate bone marrow very uh, clearly. You may not need bone marrow biopsy in all the cases, except when the PET scan is negative uh, for bone marrow involvement or there are unexplained cytopenias. Ejection fraction is important. Doing an echo is important whenever you are planning an enterocycline based therapy, especially in patients. Uh, we do it for all patients above 40 years of age and MRI of selected sites, although it is recommended uh, especially for the spinal uh, involvement by the lymphoma, CNS involvement per se in Hodgkin is very rare, seen in less than 1% of the cases. FNAC, which is one of the commoner modalities used for diagnosis, you should remember that this is not the recommended tool for diagnosis. False negative rate can occur to the tune of 15 to 40%. 
It's not enough for diagnosis, neither for classification. FNA by flu is one of the emerging methods which can be used for diagnostic purposes and has shown good specificity and sensitivity as compared to histopathology. We're going to staging. Staging is by the classical anabar staging and some modifications of it. Uh, this is based on CT scan. So one stage one is when only single lymph node or single extra lymphatic site is there. Stage two when two or more lymph node sites on the same side of the diaphragm or one or more uh, lymph node and some uh, local extra lymphatic extension, but same side of diaphragm that is either below diaphragm or above diaphragm. Stage three when both sides of the diaphragm are involved and stage four when there is diffuse involvement or two or more extra lymphatic organs are involved. If there are B symptoms like unexplained fever, night sweats, or weight loss of more than 10% over six months, these are called B symptoms. It's A if these are absent, and B if uh, any of the B symptoms are present. Bulky disease, more than 10 centimeter in the size of the largest uh, node, or a mediastinal mass covering more than one third or more of the intrathoracic diameter. So, what we have is early and early stage. So these are certain classification which are used for to diagnosis of favorable risk factor for stage one and two Hodgkin lymphoma. And three systems are used: the German Hodgkin study group, EORTC, the European group, and the NCCN. If you see that the parameters commonly ESR and B symptom, mediastinal mass, and nodal sites are common to all three. GSHG persists on the extra lymphatic site, EORTC on the age, and NCCN on the bulky disease. Uh, just remember that the nodal sites in all these three classifications are slightly different. So just whenever you are following one classification, follow it throughout. That is uh, important. For the advanced stage, we have what is called as Hazen-Claver Index or the uh, International Prognostic Score. It comprises of uh, various parameters like for the patient age, sex, age more than 45, male sex, tumor stage 4, Lab related parameters like uh, hemoglobin less than 10.5, albumin less than 4, leukocytosis more than 15,000, or lymphopenia less than 600, 600 or 800. We can clearly see that whatever chemotherapy regime you use, either ABVD, BFOP, or escalated BFOP, the overall survival and freedom from treatment failure that decrease as the stage advances. This can be clearly seen in this uh, figure. That, uh, that on the top we had, uh, we have IPA0 with almost 95% uh, survival long term, uh, PFS long term, which is decreasing to almost 50% 50 as IPS score increases to 5 or more. This is important that most of the patients today undergo PET scan for the staging purposes. PET scan were introduced in the management of lymphoma in early 90s and are now used for tailoring of therapy and risk stratification as well, in addition to staging. They are useful for detection of reduced residual nodes after disease, persistent disease, scarring, and ruling out other non-malignant processes. Earlier, we had other classification system for uh, uh, staging on the PET, but now what we have is dual criteria, which are used almost now for two de more than two decades. It's called negative if the, if, uh, the uptake in the node is compared as compared to mediastinum and liver. So, 1, 2, and 3 are termed negative. Positive, when the uptake is slightly higher than the liver and usually above the adjacent background activity. 5, when the uptake is markedly higher than the liver. And X, when new areas of uptake occur, which are unlikely to be related to lymphoma. This is different from the anabar staging in which X used to denote bulky disease. We can clearly see the interim pet or the end of treatment uh, pet, uh, how it is impacting the overall survival. If the interim pet is negative, that the patient is responding well to chemotherapy. In such scenarios, the over failure free survival reaches almost 95%, but if the pet is positive, it decreases to way below around 15%. This is irrespective of the stage. So even if the IPS stage is high and in the interim pet is negative, you have an excellent survival few uh, stat pearls around this. So stage 4 was defined as uptake more than liver as compared to the large region of the normal liver. Stage 5 when it is more than 3 times the maximum SUV in the liver or new lesions. 
uh, whenever you are assessing for the bone marrow, just remember that bone marrow is kind of proliferative in the Hodgkin lymphoma, especially after chemotherapy, as the bone marrow is regenerating when you are doing interim PET or the end of treatment PET. Uh, for complete metabolic re response, just remember that if the uptake at the site of initial disease is less than the surrounding normal tissue, you consider it as metabolic response only, whenever, even if it is occurring in the marrow. And isolated bone marrow changes, they take longer time to resolve. So, few changes in the bone marrow might be lighting up even in the end of treatment bed. Last, this is important that FDG uptakes occurs due to inflammation. This is widely known and infections. So, Whenever you are assessing for interim assessment for, uh, with PET, so just try to do it before you are giving the next cycle of chemotherapy. In the, uh, for the end of treatment PET, around six week interval should elapse. And if you have given radiotherapy in which scarring and inflammation are more likely to happen, use the end of treatment PET after around three months of therapy. So treatment. Uh, like uh, BALL, Hodgkin lymphoma has been a success story in, uh, since the introduction of combined modality treatment. And as you can see, the outcomes have been improving since 1960s, 70s and 1990s. So, if we see in the current era, we see that uh, uh, mortality is less common, especially in the early stage Hodgkin lymphoma, up to 5% up to 10 years up to 10 years and most of these cases are again not related to disease unless uh, there is a relapsed refractory disease. But there is high amount of toxicity because of cardiac or pulmonary toxicity because of chemotherapy or radiotherapy as well as a risk of second primary malignancy including therapy related AML or MDS. These are important because as we see the outcomes approach almost 80-90%, these less common toxicity and the, when the patient are surviving for a longer duration of time these uh, long-term toxicity become an uh, important concern whenever you're designing chemotherapy protocols or new trials. So, let's start. I'll be focusing mainly on the basis of the incision guidelines and providing the evidence for the same. So, whenever you have a stage 1A or 2A disease, favorable type, that is no B symptoms, less than 3 sites, ESR is low, age is uh, less than 50 for most of the cases and stage is 1 or 2. So, non-bulky disease, you start with ABVD. This is a standard regime for most of all the patients. Two cycles, do an interim PET. If the interim PET show duly 1 or 2, uh, what you can do is you have two options. Either you continue with two cycles, uh, you can continue with chemotherapy alone, ABVD two cycles from these two trials or just ABVD one trial from the rapid trial. Or the combined modality treatment, this is one of the preferred options for early uh, favorable disease in which you give involved site radiation. After two cycles of chemotherapy, only 20 gray of radiation. Or you can give one more cycle and 30 gray of radiation from these two trials. If there is DEVIL 3, you can continue with the combined modality treatment or consider ABVD for two cycles or uh, radiotherapy for 30 gray. For DEVIL-4, you can consider ABVD for two cycle restage and do a pet adapted therapy. For DEVIL-5, just re-biopsy and confirm the diagnosis and consider it as a refractory disease. For unfavorable disease, the algorithm is slightly easier. Start with ABVD two cycles, do an interim pet. Uh, just slight modification here for the combined modality, you give two more cycles of ABVD and a 30 gray of radiation. This is important. We will see subsequently that if the PET is negative, you can continue with the omission of uh, bleomycin. You can continue with ABD for four mole cycle. This is a very important trial, trial Rathel trial, which was published around couple, uh, half a decade ago. If the dual score is four to five, you should consider for escalation of the therapy to a more toxic regime, be a cop for two cycles, then proceed accordingly. If uh, the disease is responding, consider two more BACOP and if the disease uh, or ISRT uh, after four cycles of BACOP, uh, after two cycles of BACOP, again, if dual four or five, re-biopsy. Let's look at the evidence. So, HD are the German trials, uh, HD 10, 11, uh, 10, 11, 14, 16. These are done, these are done for favorable, unfavorable disease. For the favorable disease, what we have is the best prognosis achieved with ABVD into two to or two or four cycles and 
limited amount of radiotherapy. For the unfavorable group, what we have is ABVD into four cycles and 30 gray of radiotherapy, uh, which is giving the best overall and the best PFS survivals. For unfavorable group, ABVD into four plus 30 gray, giving pre PFS around 89 to 90%. But if you escalate to BACOP, it improves to 95%. Remember, these are German trials. And as we understand uh, from uh, our experiences and uh, the published uh, publication of Indian data, we understand that most of the Indian patients are not highly tolerant of BACOP. BACOP is associated with considerable toxicity and neutropenia. So patients in Germany are able to take care of themselves with this BACOP regime. But many patients in India will require more intensive care and monitoring. Then. Pet guided trials, they appeared. Rapid trials, this was for non, uh, inf this was a non inferiority trial in uh, stage 1A of 2A disease, in which IFRT was shown to be non inferior to three cycles of the uh, chemotherapy. Again, Rathai trial, this is very important. This was for all the stages of disease, in which after PET scan, uh, if the PET scan was negative after two cycles, uh, the, the chemotherapy was compared between two arms. ABVD four arms or AVD into four months, that is omission of bleomycin. What we had is that uh, PFS three year was and overall survival was similar in these two arms. So you can safely omit bleomycin if PET scan is negative after two cycles. If PET is positive, then you can consider for escalation to bake off for four cycles with leading to acceptable PFS in these patients. So certain treatment pulse with ABVD. So ABVD has uh, two parts. Each cycle has two parts, part A and part B, given on day 1 and 14. And this completely, uh, both of these constitute one cycle. Uh, just remember that if 1A or 2A is given, you have to continue with B on the schedule time as per the chemotherapy cycle. Uh, for most of the patient, you can consider inserting a CVAD, a PIC line or a port or a Hickman. Other drugs you are giving are vesicants and irritant and can lead to line side pains. Uh, the regime can lead to significant neutropenia in certain group of patient, but we should avoid the use of GCSF early during the cycles because of neutropenia as GCSF use has been associated with increased incidence of bleomycin induced lung toxicity. For such patient, monitor with pulmonary function test. Rathel trial is important because if you are able to omit uh, bleomycin, you can safely consider uh, uses of this chemotherapy regime for long periods. Interim PET should be done around in the last week of cycle, preferably around day 25 to 27 and end of treatment uh, PET after around six weeks of AVVD completion, whatever number of cycles you are considering. Regarding BACOP, uh, there is uh, some data to suggest that uh, uh, procarbazin in BACOP can be substituted with decarbazin. And this does not compromise the event-free survival and has led to reduced gonadal toxicity and neutropenia. Uh, in this, decarbazine is given on day 2 and day 3. Data is available which suggests that efficacy is equal, transfer requirement decrease, and acute admission to hospital decrease. Nowadays, with the addition of uh, uh, brintuximab, as we will subsequently see, this uh, regime is uh, further modified into uh, omission of bleomycin altogether and uh, addition of brintuximab instead of that. And uh, prednisolone is substituted with de uh, dexamethasone. Equivalent survival, more favorable toxicity profile with this BR ECAD re uh, regime. So these are not so novel agents, monoclonal antibodies. Uh, so brintuximab is an anti CD30 monoclonal antibody, which is a drug conjugate, uh, which is bound to the tubule disrupting agent MMAE. So this is internalized into the cell. The Agent MMA is re released by the lysosomal proteins, bind to the tubulins and leads to cell death. Similarly, what we have are checkpoint inhibitors. So these are immune checkpoints which are expressed on the uh, Hodgkin tumor cells and the inactive T cells, CTLA and uh, PDL, uh, PD1 and PDL2, which are the important uh, markers uh, on the surface of these cells. So what happens if these are expressed? The T cells become inactive and are not able to kill the tumor cells. Checkpoint inhibitor, they block these uh, uh, receptors, PD-1 or PDL one or CTLA, and the T cells become active and leads to 
ट्यूमर से रिलेटेड सो दीज एजेंट्स हैव बीन नाउ ट्राइड एंड टेस्टेड स्पेशली इन एडवांस एन एंड नाउ मोर कॉमनली इन अर्ली डिसीज एज वेल सो वी हैव वेरियस ट्रायल ब्रिटुक्सिम विथ एवीडी दैट इज ओमिशन ऑफ ब्लियोमाइसिन two cycles of uh, this cycle if uh, pet is negative before pet positive with six cycles three year pfs all the more around 94% excellent again then we have trials like uh, uh, nivhal trial in with nivolumab which is a checkpoint inhibitor which is given for four cycles with uh, uh, radiotherapy followed by nivolumab ebvd for two cycles or radiotherapy we have very good overall response rates and pfs of around 900 to around 100% in the early stage group and the other checkpoint inhibitor pembrolizumab when it was given with the for three cycles followed by avd we had pfs almost reaching 100% at two years just check uh, this is for stage 1 2 unfavorable only and stage 3 4 this is important i uh, will see in subsequent slide as well that uh, this combination a pembrolizumab and avd is leading to excellent pfs and overall survival rate in almost all the disease stages what do we do for advanced stages for stage 3 and 4 start with avd first option very commonly used in our scenarios if pet is negative as per the rathral trial omit bleomycin and give four cycles if pet is positive give escalated wake up for three cycles pet negative after that give one more cycle a uh, plus minus uh, radiotherapy of pet spot biopsy for stage 3 4 you can ha- you have an option of given brentuximab and avd for up to 6 cycles use with caution uh, patient who have elderly and those with uh, neuropathy for certain patient younger patients or with higher ips score you can use escalated bcop how do we use it give for two cycles do a pet a pet negative give two more cycles you can de- deescalate to avd also for four cycles if pet is negative if pet is positive uh then you can consider for four two more cycles continue for total six cycles so evidence rathal trial we had already discussed ht14 was the trial which used uh, bacop uh, in the fashion which we described earlier what we have is five year pfs or around 90% which is excellent overall uh survival is also to the tune of 95 to 100% so in various treatment arms we can see that uh, bcop is leading to five year pf of around 90% if given for six cycles then pet positivity 92% 88% even in the pet positive group uh an important slide uh, how to decide on the radiation intensity as the chemotherapy intensity increases in the escalated bcop or decreases uh, down to standard 4 5 and somewhere avd lies in between so the need for radiotherapy for almost advanced stages this decreases uh, sorry it increases subsequently for bcop you require uh, radiotherapy in almost like 10% of the cases for avd around 40 to 50% of the cases well, let's see about brentuximab upfront data uh, this is important trial echelon 1 PC trial BV uh, AVD versus ABVD median PFS as you can see was better in the uh, brentuximab arm 82% versus 72% it comes at a increased cost of uh, neuropathy febrile neutropenia and tetra infection but less pulmonary toxicity because of omission of bleomycin severe is GCSF in such scenario because you are not using bleomycin it reduces grade 3 neutropenia and febrile neutropenia incident considerably so uh this uh, regime bv plus avvd can easily be used in advanced stage hodgkin lymphoma with uh, liberal use of gcsf if required neuropathy which occurs is problematic but usually resolved by the end of the treatment or within one year of treatment uh checkpoint inhibitors we have already seen the these two trials uh, nivo plus avd and uh, pem, uh, pembrolizumab plus avd so the CRR and uh, complete response rate and the PFS were almost to the tune of 80 to 100 percent at the end of two years. Let's see about relapse and refractory disease. So important, you need to prove uh, any suspicion of relapse with a biopsy unless the node is totally inaccessible to you. Uh, that is the internal nodes, which are you usually uh, diagnosed on PET scan and uh, not easily accessible at times. 
So otherwise, try for the biopsy always for uh, to prove the refractivity. There are transformation incidences reported in Hodgkin lymphoma as well. First line to go is uh, second line systemic therapy. Give for two cycles, restage. If it is responding, consider for high dose uh, chemotherapy that is autologous transplant. Or for certain cases, if the transplant is contraindicated, you can observe with RT. For such high risk cases, you can consider for brentuximab maintenance or observation. If the disease is showing partial response, that is doable for, you can still consider for a transplant plus minus RT and brentuximab maintenance. For doable 5, that is non responsive disease or new lesions, transplant is not uh, indicated. For such patient, you can give RT or further systemic therapy if the disease response, consider for allodynic transplant in such cases. What is the evidence? So we can have, we have various regimes like uh, DHAP, ICE, ICE plus GVT, ESHAP. All of these regimes are leading to pre-transplant over response rate of the tune of around 60 to 80 percent and three-year PFS of around 50 to 80 percent in these cases like uh, three-year PFS around 70 percent with DHAP, 70 percent with ICE and GD, GVD, overall survivals are good. So novel agents are used in these as well. What we have is when uh, brintuximab is uh, used with ICE sequentially, uh, the, the CMR or the molecular response bit negativity rates improved to almost 80% uh, and two-year PFS was improving to around 80%. Last, we see that uh, with the brintuximab and checkpoint inhibitor combination, we have very good uh, uh, bit negativity rates almost to the tune of 70% uh, to almost 90%. And to your PFS reaching 80% in most of the cases. So these are important uh, uh, trials which show that brentuximab, when combined uh, with various chemotherapy regimes, including ICE, ESHAP, Bendamustin, DAP, they are leading to excellent pre-transplant pet negativity rates and better two-year PFS rates. What happens if the disease is refractory to both brentuximab and these? In such a scenario, chemotherapy is usually not very effective. Other agents like uh, ebrolimus, lenalidomide, and uh, ebrutinib, they are used but not to a great effect. And this is a new uh, monoclonal antibody which came in the town, uh, CD25 and uh, uh, antibody drug conjugate. Again, works on the DNA and leads to cell death. It also improves the, uh, has a targeting of uh, CD25 positive T-Rex which increase and promote the immunological tumor eradications. What we had is excellent overall response rate around 80% with 50% CR rates. <laughs> transplant, transplant autologous in CR2 or more. Conditioning is beam, most commonly used. Other uh, also have been used like CVV, team or Bendaim. Worst prognosis, uh, the prognostic uh, markers are primarily resistant disease or disease which relapses within 12 months with B symptoms or external disease or those with anemia. Emerging markers like circulating tumor DNA or metabolic tumor volume on PET are also there. Important to see that if there is metabolic CR, the PFS rates are around 70%. But if there is PR or active residual disease, this PFS decreases only, only around 30%. And with time, we can see that uh, the response rates with the autologous transplants are improving. Earlier, it was for the tune of around 50%, which improved around 80% with uh, these two regimes like ICE or Benda ICE, followed by autologous transplant. And with the Pembro GVD and followed by autologous transplant, the PFS at two years reaching around 95%, which are kind of best responses which you can get in a relapse disease. So, more patients are now eligible with the use of uh, Benda and uh, checkpoint inhibitor based therapies. Post-transplant maintenance, this was initially came with the use of uh, brentuximab when it was used uh, as a three-weekly regime for 16 weeks in patients who are high risk, that is primary refractory, remission less than 12 months or extended involvement. And PFS was of the tune of 60% in the Benda arm versus 40% in the placebo arm. Uh, these patients uh, were there who had who were benda, uh, brentuximab naive. So they had not received chemotherapy based uh, protocols when uh, as second line therapy. The benefit of uh, brentuximab uh, maintenance in patients who are already brentuximab exposed is not very clear, although now commonly used. 
other options is uh, which are emerging is the use of a checkpoint inhibitor in maintenance we can see when nivolumab is added to bemtuximab pfa is around 95% and when pembrolizumab is given after a transplant 18 month pfa is around 80% which are pretty good rates allo rarely done but yes still some indication medically fit patients with relapsed refractory refractory disease who are requiring multiple lines of chemotherapy to achieve response or they are relapsing after autologous transplant both rick and uh, myeloblative conditioning are used various data which suggests that uh, overall survival at 2 to 4 years of the tune of around 60% there is some uh, points to consider when you are using a checkpoint inhibitors around the time of allogenic transplant it is recommended that uh, checkpoint inhibitors be deferred uh, the transplant be deferred for around 80 days after the last use of checkpoint inhibitors and the use of post transplant cyclophosphamide preferably in the haplos or nowadays more commonly in the match related transplant that can mitigate the cpi effect that is side effect which occur post transplant in such patients uh, gvhd and pneumonitis special scenarios elderly we expect the elderly population to have poorer disease outcomes more commonly you know already i've told you this medical comorbidities are more common so what we have is that patient with either early stage advanced stage multiple prognostic factors all these conditions any of the scenario you consider elderly population tend to have a poorer overall survival and a, a poorer tolerance to chemo chemotherapy but should we less use less toxic therapy preferably yes but their efficacy is not known frailties uh, should always be assessed in elderly patient not all elderly patient are same so depending on the frailty index or whatever comorbidity index you use you can choose your patient for appropriate intensity of regime we can see the incidence of second malignancy is higher in the elderly and the five year overall survival is almost two third of that seen in the uh, patient who are less than 60 years of age what is recommended is for stage 1 into febrile disease you can consider omission of bleomycin consider some radiotherapy or even chop regime has been used with limited data available for unfavorable disease you can again avvd uh, followed by avd or brentuximab based therapy followed by avd and brentuximab or brentuximab alone or brentuximab in combination with dacarbazine in some, some of these cases so novel age we see brentuximab monotherapy brentuximab bendamustine dacarbazine combination and even uh, uh, checkpoint inhibitors have been used with uh, good success and uh, uh, improving pfs uh, i should say the overall response rate reaching around uh, 90 to 100% in certain cases and pfs uh, is not reached especially with the use of combination uh, drugs checkpoint inhibitor and brentuximab for uh, young teenagers and uh, for younger population and younger adult uh, the outcomes are not as good as the pediatric regime the regimes include steroids as they have high dose intensity initially lower dose of anthracyclines and uh, increased exposure of vinyl alkaloids are there and greater reliance is there on combined modality treatment so late toxicity including fertility second cancer and organ toxicity even bone toxicity because of steroid use they come into a part in such patients and should be counseled regarding these sometimes what can happen in pregnancy so mother health is always a priority in such scenarios fetal and maternal outcomes have been pretty fair uh, following hodgkin lymphoma treatment in pregnancy nevertheless and uh, obviously you should not be using a ct scan or a pet scan for staging use mri and ultrasound for those purposes consensus is to delay therapy if possible postpartum which is usually not the case more often than not uh, the risk of chemotherapy is highest in the first trimester so if possible delay to second trimester avvd is your regime of choice single agent vinblastin has been used and for obvious reason radiotherapy is to be delayed till after delivery uh, nlphl yes 5% of the cases this is a indolent disease usually not very aggressive but presents with advanced stages in most of the patients prognostic features include disease burden and local local and systemic symptoms sometimes rate of progression can be quicker in certain patient especially if they have abdominal lymph node neuropathy and uh, liver spleen involvement male sex and lower serum albumin uh, 
uh, Fan et al. They described uh, these C six immunoarchitectural pattern of these A and B are associated with better prognosis than the last four, and uh, the last four are called variant histology. These are present in around around twenty five percent of the cases, and leads to almost three fold risk of uh, relapse. With the pattern A and B, it's around seven percent, and it reaches around nineteen twenty percent with variant histology. How do we treat for stage one A and two A? uh this is very good uh, results have been shown with only involved site radiation therapy or even observation rituximab has been used in certain cases but uh, has been associated with increased risk of uh, the pfs is not that great for stage b or 2b chemotherapy with rituximab is used for stage 3 commonly chemotherapy with rituximab and involved site radiation is used if the disease relapses you can use rituximab in combination with any of the uh, second line chemotherapy regime used for the classical hodgkin lymphoma how do you follow up so up to 5 years hist history and examination annual influenza vaccine lab studies especially tsh uh, cbc platelet and esr for relapse and uh, chemistry profile after 5 years that's when the uh, long term side effects come into being in such a scenario you should added you should consider for cardiovascular risk assessment a stress test or a eco at 10 yearly intervals lab studies including tsh annually if rt to neck biannual lipids annual fasting glu glucose surveillance or uh, other cancers as required usually imaging is uh, you know prophylactic imaging testing is not required pet scan is used only if the previous uh, pet showed a dual 4 of 5 Surveillance PET is not routinely indicated for due to high risk of false positive. This is emerging technique, cell-free DNA. That is the DNA component, circulating DNA component excreted by the tumor cells. These have been used for Hodgkin genotype and MRD monitoring. Sample use is commonly peripheral blood, which can be freezed for longest duration of time. And uh, application are in that uh, for Hodgkin lymphoma genotyping, MRD monitoring, and therapeutic molecular response monitoring as a complement to pet scan that is shown to have additional benefit methods are clonosec that is high throughput uh, uh, reinvent sequencing next generation sequencing and digital droplet pcr last few slides so fertility is an important issue these need to be discussed at the time of diagnosis and planning of therapy uh, there are certain elements which have been shown to have reduce likelihood of uh, fertility preservation counseling primary method of uh, preserving fertility in females is embryo freezing egg freezing oophorexy and gonadal shielding not very commonly available in india just remember that uh, avvd is less gonadal toxic than pacop for male cryopreservation of semen prior to chemotherapy is recommended uh, it has been seen that uh, ABVD leads to oligospermia in around 12% of the patient versus almost 90% of the patient who receive BACOP. Lastly, about uh, advanced stage Hodgkin's, so uh, secondary malignancy is that is AML MDS is seen around 1% of the cases. If you are doing proper early escalation to BACOP, followed by transplant in around 10% of the cases who relapse. but if you are giving avvd and uh, almost a third of the cases relapse these will require transplant and uh, aml incidence increase is almost 5 to 10% so to summarize in the tb endemic lymphoma suspicion of hodgkin lymphoma in persistent lymphadenopathy is important diagnosis is by biopsy proper staging is required preferably by a pet scan or at least a ct scan ABVD remains standard for most of our patients plus minus local RT depending on the trial which you are using for your practice the relapsed patient now have improved improving outcomes especially with the use of uh, newer agents brentuximab and uh, uh, checkpoint inhibitors now being available in indian markets novel agents first using the relapse respected setting now are cruising to the front line transplant for some patients cr2 or similar 3 even emerging debates and with very good outcomes we expect long term toxicity which need addressing now uh, i'll start with the quiz what i request you is uh, 
you can write your answers in the uh, chat boxes. So, question one. A nine-year-old male presented to OPD with enlarged bilateral cervical nodes and fever. He is not responding to antibiotic course. You are suspicioning uh, he is having some lymphoma. What will you do? Efficacy, efficacy of the node and ATD trial, biopsy of the node, biopsy plus IC of the node. So I can see that most of you have written biopsy with IC, which is the correct answer. Uh, I have already highlighted that efficacy alone is insufficient. So biopsy plus IC of the node is something which is recommended for these patients. Let's do, go to question two. So this is again a Hodgkin lymphoma patient, 23 year old male. He is diagnosed as Hodgkin lymphoma and underwent PET for staging. So besides his above nodes, an area in the left lung was reported as X. What does this X mean? Bulky disease, external disease, new area of uptake, unlikely related lymphoma or old area of fibrosis. You may write your answer in the chat box. Okay, so many of you are writing external disease. Uh, on the PET scan, as I had highlighted earlier during the presentation, on the PET scan, X stands for new areas of uptake which are unlikely to be related to lymphoma. So the correct option is C in this case. Okay, let's move to question three. So uh, this is about uh, a 29-year-old boy. Cervical nodes and fever, stage 2B Hodgkin, two year back, uh, he had received these therapy. What would be the ideal plan of treatment when he relapses? Okay, so he is presented with recurrence of nodes. Earlier, he had received ABVD4 and uh, radiation. So, what could be the ideal plan of treatment for him at the time of relapse? Be it ABVD6 cycles, autologous, ice dark 3 cycles, autologous, brentuxia maintenance. Brentuximab ice or Brentuximab uh, benda followed by autologo and maintenance or escalated B pod and olive. We have very few people have answered this. So, answer could be B or C both. If you have availability uh, of uh, Brentuximab, you have a higher percentage chances of uh, this patient going into a PET negative uh, uh, disease before the transplant. In such a scenario, option C would be preferable. But the outcome with ice or that kind of therapy uh, leading to pet negativity is not that bad and is one of the commoner therapies practiced in uh, most of the government centers in India. So B, if the resource constraint, C, if uh, brentuximab is available. Okay, question four. So elderly female, 69 year old with the uh, cervical nodes and weight loss. 3B disease planned for therapy. what would be the ideal regime for her? ABVD into 6, Brentuximab Nevo, escalated b cord or Brentuximab AVD into 4. We have a couple of responses only. So, you won't do, don't want to give ABVD 6 cycles upfront in uh, elderly patients at this age with high risk of coronary toxicity. Anyway, 6 cycles at the outset would be detrimental for most of the cases. Brentuximab with Nevo, yes, it has been studied, but in the absence of randomized data, it is not the recommended trail uh, study. BCOP or BCOD accelerated high amount of toxicity, not recommended for most of the patients. So perhaps uh, with stage three uh, study and Echelon trial, I like to go with Brentuximab with ABVD into four uh, for this patient. So option B would be more ideal therapy for this patient. Uh, which of the following is not a long-term concern in patients who have received chemo and radiation for Hodgkin lymphoma? Cardiac toxicity, thyroid abnormalities, myeloid malignancy, and renal failure, chronic renal failure. So, all of you are writing as renal failure, which is the correct answer. Cardiac toxicity uh, and myeloid malignancies can be seen because of anthracycline use or etoposide use, thyroid abnormalities because of radiation use. Renal failure has not been characteristically described as a chronic complication. I think with this, I like to conclude and uh, thank you.